There's only one left, and that's a famous Paul Preston, world famous. Let's give him up here. Light him up. World famous, and I have a target on my back for it. <laughs> well, um, well, first of all, I want to say, you know, what a great night it is because I'm surrounded by patriots who believe in the Constitution. And, uh, you know, we, we just had a, the passing of perhaps this nation's greatest constitutionalist in Anton Scalia. And for those of you that don't know, Anton Scalia was an originalist in the Constitution. You know what that means? He read it for what it was. Okay, the world famous, the other part of me, the other, is now going into an appendage, <laughs> Ted Collins. Why? Because he believed in the, uh, the original Founder Fathers, going back to the founding document yeah. and get, looking at it and getting each bill a close scrutiny of the Constitution. Based upon the words of the Founding Fathers. That's an originalist. Now, let's go back to the Founding Fathers, the originalists, and where they came from, because this kind of uh, touches upon what Bob was talking about. Where did they come from? They came from mostly Europe, England, and they remembered what it was like in Europe at the time when they came over here. Great Repression. You had religious sects rounding up the usual suspects and because you weren't paying the duty to the Pope and others. Families were, you know, whole families were being rounded up and burned in churches. Beheadings. That steeled these people to come across the sea in sailing ships and settle in a new world. These Protestants, or Protestants as they were known, settled the United States of America. And they wrote some of the greatest documents mankind has ever known. Nearly all of the Founding Fathers, except for two, were Protestants, Protestants, against especially religious tyranny. Promulgated by Islam and the Pope. Hello, Jesuits. Why were the Jesuits formed? They were the army of the Pope, and they were formed to put down who? Martin Luther and his group, known as Protestants. The Founding Fathers, all of them, except for one Jew and one Catholic, there were no Catholics here, were Protestants. I'm just putting that in perspective so that you understand and make the connection to Anton Scalia's death on Saturday. He's an originalist. The written word of the Constitution is what he believed in. He was a Catholic too. And he was a Roman Catholic, that's correct. Thank you, Oz. But an originalist he was because he believed in the Founding Fathers and what that Constitution represented and against the repression for which it represented and why it gave us freedom. We just lost a giant. Yeah. It's not an accident, and I'll explain that later. Okay, every night, three hours a night, at the beginning of my radio show, I play a little ditty. It goes about a minute and 20 seconds. In the radio world, an introduction that long is stupid. It should go 20 seconds. But I say screw that. Because the message is so strong. This is a five-year-old message. I've been playing it repeatedly for five years. It's like I could sing it to you, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, that's my word. Anyway, there's a line in there where we hear Barack Hussein Obama just before the election in 2008. And what he does is he says this, the Constitution is an imperfect document. That's what he says. That's polar opposite from an originalist. 
If the Constitution is an imperfect document, then it's open for what? Change. 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 And you know what? Because I'm president, ha, I can change it. See how that works? And look where we are almost eight years later. In turmoil and chaos, almost lawlessness, because he has determined for himself, for himself he's the dictator. For himself he can tell us what to do, and we have to do it. Or we get tracked down with drones and murdered. That's America today. That's what anti-originalism, that's what anti-constitutionalists all, are all about. It's called, hello, I started every night on my show, totalitarianism. That's what Adolf Hitler was about. That's what Stalin was about. That's what Karl Marx was about. That's what Bernie Sanders is about. Hillary Rodham Clinton. Oh, there's others too. We can name a whole bunch of them. But you see, stopping totalitarianism one person at a time, I say all the time. I open up the show that way. Recently, I've been opening up the show, stopping totalitarianism, one burns Oregon at a time. Yes. Now, I got, I got news for you. We've seen one of the greatest overreaches in American history in the last 30 days by our government in the step towards totalitarianism like we've never seen. And I want to tell you that, you know, I gave a little bit of pause, because I get these calls. I know who's listening on my cell phone. And they are. And they're listening to you. And they're paying, they're going to listen and watch the YouTube for the night. And I said to myself, wow, I really got kind of gutter, especially when I watched the videos of LaVoy from the nicely supplied drone from the CIA, which I told you guys about. It was a drone from the CIA, it was operational, made operational early in January, and I told you about the retasking of satellites over Burns, two of them. CIA didn't like the fact I was telling you about that, but boy do I have a lot more for you. So the CIA takes it upon itself to do that. Here's my point, is that we have seen this upheaval, and I, I mean, how many of you got that gut hurt feeling when you heard about LaVoy being murdered, when it, when it really came out? When they put out the video, you saw it, yeah. yep. and you said, my God, they used a video, they used about 50, 50 large vehicles with numerous armed individuals, right, all tacked up and everything, according to the people inside. Two of them, Victoria Sharp, who I interviewed, and Shauna Cox, they said there were two dozen men up on the hillside there as they came around the corner and started shooting at the truck as they went into the snow. That was an ambush, plain and simple. How many of you were kind of gut hurt at that? Yeah. And to think that they would put up a drone to track us down. Patriots constitutionalist. And the reason why they were doing that, they wanted to stop the spread of the virus. And you may have heard this when those two Oregon senators went into John Comey's office in January, about January 21st, and said, we've got to stop this virus from spreading. And what was the virus that was spreading? This is how it worked out, I'm, and I'm telling you this, I've said this before, now it may make sense to you. Evan Bundy, first of all, I got contacted, and I, uh, who's the former sheriff in Marin County with, that uh, has all the Bundy pictures and stuff, what's his name? From Nevada County. Huh? Weldon Travis, at the Liberty Tour here. Weldon Travis says, Paul, you got to jump in the middle of this Hammond thing. You can do this. You can get involved in this. So I said, God, well, <laughs> what else could I do? And so I said, all right. Because I, you know, Hammond, or excuse me, Clive and Bundy, 
shows up here, we have two times Liberty Tour here. So I called Hammond County, and I talked to the handler for the Ham, or excuse me, Harney County, get this right, and I talked to the Hammond guy, the guy who was handling it all, I called him, he said, he don't want to do it anymore. they're just going to go up to prison, it's okay, just go. Okay. This is in early November. At the same time, Ammon Bundy's up there talking to the sheriff, a non-constitutional sheriff, an appointed sheriff, an appointed sheriff by the elites in Oregon. He's not elected. He has no clue about the Constitution, which was evident to Ammon. So Ammon in December starts to educate the people of Harney County, say that right, Harney County about the Constitution and their rights and what the BLM is doing. And it resonated with the people of Harney County. Several other meetings developed. The people are not happy when they're hearing what's in the Constitution and what is reality. And they're confronting elected officials, so-called elected officials, including Judge Gratzley. Judge Gratzley is not an elected judge. He is an administrative judge. But he appointed the new sheriff. You see there's something wrong with that picture. Big time. Well, they're trying to call for that. So they have these uh, things going on. Then they bring in the bombshell. Chris Ann Hall. January 17th and 18th. And I know some of you are calling, hey, should we go? But I'm saying, I don't know about that. So she goes up there the 17th and the 18th, speaks to about 900 people, overflow crowd. And those powers that be are pissed because the virus is spreading. Just recently, there's a, a uh, telephone conversation that's been released with Jason Van Tatenhove and um, what's his name from the Oath Keepers? Stuart Rhodes. Stuart Rhodes, thank you. And they're talking to LaVoy Finnegan. And this is two days before the killing. And they have him on the phone, and now there's some more released information that came from that. And they're telling him, you need to go to some other county where you have a constitutional sheriff and you get coverage, and you can spread this. So they chose Palmer in Grant County, and a John, or, yeah, a John Day, which is just north of there. So they agreed to go, and they organized it. I have to tell you, I talked to somebody close to that conversation the day after the shooting, when I found out about the shooting, and I said, how did you think the FBI knew about that? Silence. They're listening. The guy driving the Jeep was a plant to begin with because they knew he would take them. They wanted Bundy separated from the others. That's how they know. A lot of silence, a lot of stupidity. But it happened. But they were going to spread the virus. And spreading the virus of the Constitution is not acceptable. As we have seen with Anton Scalia. There's no suspicious circumstances there, now is there? <laughs> Those of you that went to the Tea Party, the Tea Party breakfast, and is he getting good news at the Tea Party? Get information. I spoke a little bit about what I was hearing and what I knew. And in light of Finnegan, I said, "There's, I just put it out there because why? My people tell me things." You know, the guys that I talked to, one guy I don't even know his name. I've been talking to him for five years, five and a half now. And they're always right. They're always right. And I got to tell you, uh, three months ago, it was Dr. Jim Garrow in a conversation, not only with myself, but with others. He said, watch what they're going to do to a Supreme Court justice. So my other guys call me Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning. I didn't tell everybody that Monday and Saturday, but and they said, something is going to happen, they're going to take out a big one. 
And we were at breakfast, and I told everybody that. I didn't know anything about the <coughs> Scalia thing. You see how predictive this stuff is. The behavior and intelligence that we're getting out of this administration and others. We know what's going to happen. And stay tuned, I'll tell you whenever I get more information about what's going to happen. But some things to me are just pretty obvious. They're trying to destroy the Constitution, and this is just clear-cut evidence of that. I mean, <laughs> the circumstances around Scalia's death are almost identical and duplicated around Andrew Breitbart. Now, let's stop for a second. Andrew Breitbart died at 12.10, or 12.18, on March 1st, 2012. Eleven hours later, he was going to give a press conference. And in that press conference, he was going to reveal to the world what the agenda for President Barack Hussein Obama was going to be for the next four years. It was called critical race theory. All of you that have white privilege out there, pay attention. It's the racist agenda, and you heard Bob talk about this. This has been planned for years. Karl Marx, Trotsky, Islam, they have been trying to do this for years to divide America along racial lines. But then guys like Martin Luther King pop up. <laughs> Hate to spoil the party for everybody, right? And that's how we have been growing up here for the last 40, 50 years, is in light of what Martin Luther King has always said. It's the content of your, of your, of your character. It's not your skin color. Amen. Which has befuddled everybody on the left. All the totalitarians go, darn Martin Luther King, we tried to discredit him. We took him out. Gee, I wonder about his assassination. Gee, I wonder who the last large figure American in American history who died in Texas was. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, a Roman Catholic. The One World Order people have been working that long. They have not lost the vision of totalitarianism around the world and the destruction of the American Constitution in the United States of America. Now, this is the challenge. It's getting to be fish or cut bait time. I'm just trying to spell it out for you as clear as I can. And you know, you've been surrounded tonight with a bunch of people who have taken it upon themselves, one person at a time, to accept these challenges. Some of us have our life on the line. And we know that. This is what they're trying to do, is destroy the Constitution. And they're doing everything possible that they can, even if it means taking on a Supreme Court justice. In pretty dramatic style. Now we have the big controversy around Scalia, don't we? about who's going to replace him, all that stuff. We'll see if Mitch McConnell commits to not replacing him. We'll see, we'll see about that. Well, yeah, money talks, so look at Paul Ryan. Just, <laughs> just a little highlight. Yep. Any questions about Scalia before I go on to the next thing? Yes, sir. Federal marshals, and according to the federal marshal, who was an Obama appointee, who declared him dead, he wasn't on site at the time when he died. He was told. He was told, according to him, that Scalia said he could have the night off. Yeah. It just gets fish. Listen, it just gets fishier. Can Scalia verify that? Yes. Well, he no, he's dead. But I'm, I'm saying the guy was not there. He was not present. Uh, the, the fix was in. I mean, I'm telling my people are saying clearly the fix was in. It was assassination. This is a typical assassination CIA style. Yes, sir. They're not having an autopsy, are they? No. No. Family said no. And what they're going to do? Family said no. The first, uh, the first, they couldn't find a, a judge or a justice of peace. Because they, the people that are the justices of peace in that area 
work around. So they found some other ones. One of them said, uh, no, it's okay. And they verified his death over the phone. And then they contacted another one that was the partner of that one, I guess. And they said, no, I would order an autopsy. But it was too late. Yes? Now that's in Texas too. No, Texas law is out there. In fact, I was going to, I just got the, listen, in my spare time, I read Texas law. <laughs> this is no joke. Just as I was starting to come over here, I, I opened up some emails and I, I got to tell you something. If I could give medals of honors to some of the people that supply me information, I would. But like one, the one guy, I'm trying to figure out who the guy's name is. It's really kind of, I call him Bub sometimes. I, I don't know what to call the guy. But I have people that email me stuff. I've got a really good core of people over the years that have been emailing me information about stuff. And I have this one woman. I know that she used to work for the federal government for a big alphabet agency. And her, there, she's retired. Can't tell you about her husband. And um, God, I just get premium information from her. And she we got this great relationship going. Anyway, uh, she sent me the law about suspicious death, or any death like this. And it requires, in Texas law, I just got done reading it, that an autopsy must be performed. It's not any different than California law. So right away, things are suspicious. And the pillow thing, I'm not really buying the pillow thing yet, but the guy who found him, the rancher there, was a friend of Obama. Now that's something to behold. Big time. You have a picture of it. Carl put the picture in the in the thing. Yes, ma'am. Yes. In California, the person is under doctor's care and has been seen and expected to die. If they're under maternal care, then they don't need an autopsy. And that story was floated early. I got to tell you that. That story came out of Washington and was floated early and not true that he was seeing a doctor for his care. He was 79, but he had not, he was not seeing a doctor for any kind of critical care or anything like that. He was healthy. But that story was floated, not verifiable. I checked it out. I could not bear it. Now, if it comes back verified and you have a doctor who steps up, that's a whole different issue. But I checked that out. They floated that right away. It came out Saturday afternoon. That that story, oh, he was, in the, he was seeing a doctor, he was sick, you know, that stuff. None of that was true as far as I could tell. So, anything else on that one? Yes, sir. No autopsy. Here's the critical thing. In fact, um, on our website, Agenda 21 Radio, uh, Jim Garrow put out an article about how all that works. Because, you know, he's former CIA, and he knows these kind of things, and uh, talks about um, Andrew Breitbart. A good friend of his was Tom Clancy, and they took Tom Clancy out. Same way. It was poison. But what, what has happened in every one of the cases of these people being assassinated, the autopsy is not begun and tissue samples usually don't start for five days. And after five days, those toxins go away in the body. The only time that did not happen was with Andrew Breitbart. And with Andrew Breitbart, apparently the autopsy surgeon didn't get the memo, don't take tissue biopsies, um, two days after his death. So he sent the talk screen out, and it came back, and he read it. Two days later, he was dead. That's the way the game is played. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on Anton Scalia? Yes, sir. Was he there for hunting purposes? And uh, what I read, he wasn't found till 11.30, well, he wasn't going to go hunting, from what I understand. But, uh, yeah, it was quite some time until around 11.30, I understand, that they actually checked it out. So that would have been 9.30 our time here. And then the then it was two hours until information came out. You know, they didn't know, you know what to do. Um, it was confusion and chaos, is what one of the headlines says. Yeah. You know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, you know, right now it doesn't look good. You know, it just doesn't look good. They're going to try and cover it up. Okay, I'm going to move on to Hillary emails. I know you're all excited about Hillary emails. I am. I just think it's wonderful. Um, 
it, the most important thing was is that the inspector general of the State Department several months ago subpoenaed all the records from the Clinton Foundation. Cool. I hate it when this happens. <laughs> I just hate it when this happens. And uh, that's the most recent thing that's starting to hit now. And more and more classified emails are coming up. Uh, more and more of the super double quadruple secret classified stuff is coming up. And the, the deeper this, the longer this goes, the deeper it gets for her. By the way, she's trending terribly in polls. Yeah. Terribly. <laughs> Fundraising is down to nothing. Uh, not a lot of people are going out and watching her campaign speeches. They do, they have in real tight, condensed places. Um, the death rattle, I think, is starting to go for Hillary Rodham Clinton. But listen. Prison. <laughs> Strikes look good. Listen, I gotta tell you something. Uh, this, and I said this before, this is well beyond the Rosenbergs. What she has done, and the amount of information that's been leaked to all of our enemies out there, for her profit, for her, her and Bill Clinton's profit for that foundation, is beyond the pale of the Rosenbergs. The Rosenbergs were executed for nuclear secrets that were given to the Russians in the 50s. And I think that at some point in time, we have to cross that divide and say whether or not she needs to be executed. Amen. Wow. I mean, if the, if, yeah. if the, if the value of these, these secrets, including nuclear codes and so on for submarines, which were found on her emails. I'll make a motion. <laughs> How many seconded that? I mean, that's something that's got to be on the table. It's not just prison when you do this sort of thing. If you or I were to leak that information, we would be not in prison, but probably executed. Yes, sir. I'm curious, uh, with, her, with her demise and going down, is there a big play for Bloomberg or Biden to get in still? Yes. Um, I say there's three top candidates right now for that boy. Uh, for the boy, now, where it's going to shake out for president and vice president, I think Joe Biden, you're going to see a Joe Biden a nomination for president. You're going to see, um, after that, what you're going to see is a, um, are you trying to kick me on? Are you, geez, I don't like the hook thing. Was. <laughs> What's going on? Anyway, uh, a Biden, Bloomberg type of thing. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So before people leave, you know, go to Applebee's. <laughs> I'll interrupt Paul for a minute. Uh, earlier, Bill announced that the Sutter County Board of Supervisors tomorrow night is going to, in their meeting, they're going to adopt an uh, urgent emergency ordinance to prohibit outdoor cultivation of marijuana. Good thing. Uh, they're going to regulate the structures within which marijuana may be cultivated, prohibit mobile uh, marijuana dispensaries. I would like to get as many people as possible red shirt show up at the meeting tomorrow to support the supervisors. What they're doing is really sticking their neck up for us. So, let's support them. Sutter County. Sutter County is really sticking their neck out. Uh, the meeting starts at 6, and it's on 2nd in the old Hall of Records. So, you want to say something, Frank? <laughs> yeah, uh, in Yuba County did the same thing, and uh, I'll tell you that the pot growers will be there in mass. They will be vocal. They'll be loud. They will threaten. They'll do everything. You need to, you need a huge presence. And I'll set them because they will harangue the supervisors. Excuse me. There you go. Keep the mic up your face. <laughs> Not waving it around. Yeah, just <laughs> 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 I never use a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I speak. Another contestant, right? Yeah. But please be there. They're really going to need your support because all the marijuana growers will be there. They'll take up half of the, half of the place. They, the they did that in Yuba County. Yeah. Right. And we had one quarter up in front. They'll fill the place. And they'll speak and they'll speak and they'll speak every time, every opportunity they get. You have to be there to support the supervisors <coughs> so they don't back off. Sorry, that's 
Six o'clock, where are you Six o'clock. Well, it's better than 5.30. Sorry. Yeah, get there at 5.30 to get a seat. It's the old Hall of Records. You can have it. Well, that's Second the Street. Mike. That's a hall. <laughs> right next to the courthouse. Okay, um, question about what the ticket might look like with Hillary gone is uh, Biden number one, uh, Bloomberg number two, and Jerry Brown possibly number three as VP. Don't you just love Jerry Brown? By the way, there's a new article out about Jerry Brown. I just thought that before, I'm going to answer the question in a second. Uh, but Red Smith put out another very compelling article about Jerry Brown. Now, Jerry Brown's office, I'm sure promptly at 9 o'clock, is going to call Red Smith. And it's all about the oil wells that are on Jerry Brown's property that he said he didn't have. <laughs> Don't you hate it when a plan comes together? Anyway, that's Jerry Brown. He lies to us. We know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You had a question. Your hand was up. I recognized it. I was wondering about the superdelegate and Hillary. Oh, but can't you agree with the person? Yeah. But when you're being faced with the evidence by the FBI director who's a Catholic, I might add. Uh, Jim Comey is an honest man. And when you're being charged by Jim Comey with thousands of multiple felonies, it may look really bad for the Democratic Party. And they are preparing for that. I, I know because I got Chris Street on it. <laughs> Chris Street is in it. And uh, they're, they're, the, the Democratic Party is preparing for the scenario right now. Because uh, that's why she's declining so much. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just wondering what your opinion is on Trump. Is he going to go? Well, Trump is very interesting because he's very anti republican I mean, the his Republican establishment is just imploding with Trump. And I'm not going to say yes, no, maybe so, vote for him or whatever. That's not my job here. My job is to say he's just tearing up the establishment Republicans, yes. which I don't mind at all. Yeah, no, I <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know because there's a lot of conversation today. I didn't catch up on it. I didn't call my people today. Quite frankly, I had to rebuild a fence in my backyard. Go figure. And uh, I had to do something human. <laughs> and uh, But I know that there's something going on uh, with the establishment people. They are PO'd beyond all recognition that Trump basically not only... I, don't, I, I only heard bits of Saturday night. Probably wasn't his best debate or anything. But he's still going up in the polls. Yeah. And so they're ticked. Rance Priebus, pasty face Rance Priebus. Mr. Totalitarian Lackey, Rance Priebus, he's ticked. And of course, I, I just checked, again, just before I came here, apparently Trump says the Republicans are going against their pledge. So, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a, that was a given. That was going to happen. And I, I loved uh, Mike Huckabee's comment about South Carolina, that if you're a politician and you're, the, you're afraid of the sight of your own blood, then don't go to South Carolina. <laughs> I, love I love that comment. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The senior center in Yuba City? Yeah, he hates his red shirt things. And he hates Thomas Burns. Have you ever seen this little act? He's going to bring his communist sign. Let's see. But, uh, I've seen the videos of Garamendi around uh, Tea Party types, and it's kind of like just. He's, his, he's, he's puckered up. He really is. It's kind of weird. Hey, back here, Paul. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I just wanted to tell you, you don't know. No, no, I'm going to play here. Go ahead. Do you think the FBI agent will live long enough to carry out this? Oh, Tommy? No, he's got it. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. I do know that he's got the law of protection. And the investigation, by the way, which went into Harney County, because Harney County has records on the Clinton Foundation and transfer of properties and so on like that to Uranium One, which she was getting money from. You, you do know that those of you that haven't heard me before, um, but the largest concentration of thorium is found in Harney County. 
uh, thorium is the new nuclear energy that's going to be used. And uh, Bill Gates owns a lot of it. Uh, Tom Steyer, who's Jerry Brown's good buddy, owns a lot of it. See how these people are on the One World Order thing going on? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I had a statement. Um, the Republican Party put out fundraising emails on using Trump, and he called them on it and made them stop. And I had received eight of them in one day. Okay, so the Republican Party put out fundraising letters on behalf of Trump? Yes. Right. Wanting uh, donations to the Republican Party because Trump is a Republican. But the, oh. the party wants the money. And Trump, Trump said no. Right. He yeah. said yet. Trump <laughs> doesn't want the party does. Party wants the money. Isn't it tough being a billionaire? Yeah. I mean, you can run your own national campaign and fly around in your jet all you want to. Um, let's <laughs> Oh yeah, I want to move on here real quick because um, happy hour. Well, we're getting close. You know, we're getting close to Applebee's and happy hour. Um, at least that's important for Larry. So he's always happy. Um, but you know, the, the, one of the most significant things, uh, one of the most significant things in human history happened on Thursday. Yet it was a minor little thing. It came out in the news. I was told this on Saturday. I didn't watch the mainstream media, but it came out big time on the mainstream media. Big excitement. For one day, for about a couple hours. But one of the most monumental events took place in human history. And that was the meeting between Pope Francis and the Russian Orthodox Pope. I believe his last name is Krill. Patriarch Krill. Do you know the significance of that? They hadn't talked this was the original breakup of the Catholic Church because people didn't like what the Pope was doing. The first Protestants, if you will. They kissed and made up on Thursday. And guess where? Havana, Cuba. Kissed and made up. And now, I don't know if you haven't heard the speech, I'm going to try and get the audio for this. Uh, the Pope referred to as encyclical today. His encyclical, you know, the, on the climate, on the environment, because he's always into worshiping the earth, Mother Gaia, as we call it. And if you didn't hear any of the translation, I have only heard the translation for about five minutes. I'm going to try and get the translation and post it up. It was straight out of Karl Marx. Redistribution of wealth. Talk about how we Americans have been enslaving the Mexicans for years. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I, I mean, it's, it's just like listening to a speech from Adolf Hitler. Remember, he was a socialist. Yep. Let's not forget that. There was a, a little interesting email that came around, or a thing from Facebook, I put it out. Somebody did the really nice thing and said, these are socialists. This is what socialism does. And it lists people like Stalin and Marx and Hitler. And even though the, the, the National Socialists did a very, very good job, and they still do today, that it's not them that's the problem because they're conservatives that are the problem. They did that in Nazi Germany. Did you know that? They've always been calling us. That's why they have, uh, that's why we as the patriots are the targets. You know that, right? That's the way our government today, which is head, headed by a national socialist, they have flipped the script on us as patriots. We are the enemy. We are domestic terrorists, and that's why they can fly a drone overhead and execute an innocent, unarmed man and almost killed three other people in the truck. And they were very blessed that LaVoy Finnegan took that truck off-road and got all the shooting angles wrong for the assassins, 24 of them up in the woods shooting rifles at them at all times. Hundreds of rounds fired. His last moment on this earth, he saved those three. He did the right thing. That's why he stormed out of the truck the way he did. That's a patriot. That's the constitutionalist. And I want to tell you that for a while when I saw him being gunned down and murdered and I watched the drone footage, my gut cringed. And then Saturday morning when I learned about Anton Scalia, my gut really cringed. 
But then I said to myself one thing, I am an American, and I am not going to tolerate this in my country. Not we cannot flinch from the tyrants. We cannot flinch from the tyrants. We flinch, we're dead. Our grandchildren are enslaved. That's what this means. The Second Amendment must stand, and Scalia was a champion for the Second Amendment. Chris Street's going to be on the show later this week. He met with Anton Scalia about a year and a half ago. Incredible experience for Chris. Anton Scalia holds the Constitution with the Second Amendment in front of Chris Street and says, it's an original document, it means you have the right to bear arms. And it's here to protect the American citizens from the tyranny. Government. That's right, the government. That was Anton Scalia. Do you think that may be the reason why they want him out of the equation right now if you're a one world order person? Yeah. You bet. See, there's more than one reason why the Pope and the one world acolytes were in Cuba this week. It's 2016, it's now time to get America under control. And we'll start with taking away their guns. That's what we are faced with. Learn the Constitution. The, Carl has done a great job, so is Jan, and bringing these classes to Nevada County now here. Bring your children. It's worth it to learn about the Constitution. Once you learn about the Constitution, you're going to get angry. And then you're going to say, you know what? This is the one thing they fear. I'm telling you, this is what I say on the show all the time. It's one person at a time with knowledge about the Constitution. They're terrified of us. They're terrified of the Tea Party. These guys are terrified of the Tea Party, and it's not about our age. It's about what's up here. They want to wipe out any knowledge of the Constitution. Because once they wipe it out, they can use the Constitution any way they please, because as Obama says, it's an imperfect document. That's the road to tyranny. We cannot flinch at this moment. And that's why I'm telling you this tonight. The nation is on the line. And you are the only thing stopping it, believe it or not, the Tea Party. The Tea Party throughout the nation has not wavered. We're still sticking to our guns and our constitution. And they hate it. That's why the more of these meetings, the better. The totalitarians don't like you, and now you know why. You better learn about the Constitution. You better know what the right thing to do is, what the wrong thing to do is. Call Garamendi out. Garamendi is a totalitarian. Straight up. And so is the rest of his ilk. Now, you know, just a little bit more from the domestic terrorist. <laughs> anyway, any questions before I call it a night and go up to Applebee's? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Dinner 
uh, with about 16 uh, special operators that were former uh, Blackwater types. And I want to clarify some things that in this so-called uh, Shadow Warrior Foundation, we're going to see a video here in a second, so I'm going to shut up. But, uh, the Shadow Warrior Foundation is because there's a bunch of Shadow Warriors. It's a private army, basically. It's a government uh, army that's run by private contractors coming from the State Department, all paid for by the State Department. And um, these people, uh, as you saw in the movie, basically are sort of groomed to be set up by the State Department. The Benghazi thing was a State Department, Hillary Rodham Clinton thing, uh, working in conjunction with um, the, the Obama administration, the gun running, all that stuff. And the, the problem is that you have these special operators about so far since 2006 under George Bush, the younger, this was formed. Uh, three, about 3,500 of them have died. And another 30,000 have multiple injuries by which they can get no help. Now, the day of the movie premiere, they had a special breakfast, a big uh, fundraiser for the Shadow Warriors. And the Shadow Warriors were all there, all loyal Americans, because they signed up for the duty they thought was going to make them uh, money, but be patriotic to the country. And you see that displayed in the movie, 13 Hours. Okay, now, going up to Burns, Oregon. CIA operation. They hate me telling you this. I have no problem. Not Blackwater, it's a different company, but I don't believe Blackwater's involved. You have spe special operators that were there, special operators that were shooters. They are paid assassins, in my opinion. I was given that information repeatedly, and uh, I'm sticking to it. That. Uh, in the Oregon State Police, it was all an ambush. If you saw the video that's out there, we have it up on our uh, site with Rod, I think his name is Roger Moore, the uh, state assemblyman from Nevada. He came to Portland the other day and said it right out. He's a former special operator, 24 years with the Rangers. He has set up ambushes, just like that ambush up there. And those of you that are in the military recognize that was a complete ambush. It was designed to kill everybody in the truck. It didn't work because LaVoy drove the truck off to the side, and where the shooters were, they didn't have direct access into the windows, and that's what saved them. So you have special operators, mercenaries, and the uh, call that I was on, you guys get all the information, the call that I was on as I drove up here, uh, is that they're just still pouring in assets into Burns County. Because they want the, the virus. They don't want the virus up there. They're trying to stop that virus. It's not. Do you think it, the, the virus of the Constitution is going to go away? <clears throat> Well, they were paid by the CIA. Listen, you're dealing with John Brennan. John Brennan, let me tell you who he is. He's the guy who was the, the thought process behind Benghazi, the gun running, and uh, Petraeus was the CIA director at the time. He's Obama's buddy. He's the guy who's been killing people off to protect Obama for years. No. John Brennan. John Brennan. So, Benghazi happens, Petraeus is in there, third day, and there's video of this. Third day, he's in Benghazi. He figures it out. He figures it out. It's a, it's a State Department operation, and the attackers were Al-Qaeda. Bought and paid for by Hillary and Barack Obama. He figures it out, and what happens to him? Oh, they've got a scandal, and he's gone, right? And who comes in? John Brennan, Mr. Killer himself. John Brennan is up there in Hardy County. He's been operating this whole thing. It's a CIA operation. They're the killers. Why do you think they had that drone footage that the FBI rolled out, by the way? See, the FBI... No, the FBI doesn't like what happened. And they put out that footage, and they didn't want them to. But you sure saw a lot of the stuff blacked out, right? Yeah. And those of you that have been around drones, you recognize what that is. 
When you black out that information, you're talking about stuff that's really secret. So that's where this is coming. That's where this is all playing out to be. Yes, sir. How come nothing's done about it? Uh, because everybody's in. Uh, you got a lot of people on the inside that's in on it. Take which guy out? I have no comment on that. I can't. Comment on that. I, listen, I listen. I. What's that? Well, you know, there's a. Uh, there's a. Right. That may be in this environment. Yeah. And I'm, listen, I'm very. What can we do about it? There's a lot you can do about it, my man. A lot that you can do about it. You can continue to come to these meetings and bring other people with you and get the information. They hate the information. It's putting pressure on them. It suppresses them. That is the reality. That's the political reality that we live in. But if we go out there and just all of a sudden take up arms, we're done. We can't do that. And we're not going to do that. It's for the good of the country. No. Mm -hmm. huh? No, we won't. You lost the best Supreme Court judge we had. I didn't. You didn't? No. I mean, we did as Americans. No, I said we did as Americans. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Timing is everything, and this is not the time for that. It's not the time for that discussion. What will be the time? They got to shoot first. We'll see.